you lost your dad recently. And um, how did his death affect you? Me and my dad, we was very close. We was like two peas in the pot. You know? um, for his death to really affect me, it really took me off course to the point I was just like, wow. Like, when I heard about the news of his death, it felt like my world was at a standstill. You know, it's like one of those crazy effects that they do in the movies where, you know, a person walking, everything just freezes around them, but they're still able to move. It was one of those moments. It was hard for me to really get in the mental space because I had a feature set by Inspire Word that same night. And it was hard to concentrate and get ready for that while seeing my dad in this horrible condition. I get a phone call at 5.55, about four or five minutes later. Um, she calls me again to tell me that he's gone. I'm trying to control all this emotions that I have inside of me. And I'm literally about to go off stage in about two hours. It just seemed like everything at once was just going crazy. I didn't want to talk to any people. I didn't want to talk to any friends. And then just dealing with my ex. I didn't want to deal with any women. You know, just from all the nonsense and stuff like that. I didn't want to deal with none of my professors. My professors was annoying. You know, I just wanted January to come to so that way I could just reset and just see what's going on. Like, it even came to a point where I wanted to fight people every day for a month. Gotta keep going, God gonna get me through, just like a sculpture, move me to a better day. Felt like you're watching an episode where you see a few people doing drugs and smoking, and then they start hallucinating. They see colors and shapes and dinosaurs, I mean. Tigers, whatever it is, they seen stuff from smoking their drugs. That's what it felt like trying to make a beat for the song. The beat was all over the place, and the lyrics themselves, they was also all over the place. It's like I'm talking about rejection, talk about not being good enough, and then trying to merge metaphors and wordplays somewhere into that. It just seemed like it wasn't working. And I heard this beat, and I was just like, yo. This is perfect. We gotta get this beat. This is perfect for this EP. It's gonna work. We gonna make it work. I, I think I rewrote the first verse for Rehabilitation in about a half an hour. You know? I was just like, ooh. Like, I salvaged what I had, the first verse for the original time. And then what I was coming up with, and I just managed to work that out. What, you, what I want people to do when they hear this song, I want them to be like, he got bars, but he's preaching because I've been through that. I know how that felt. What is your definition of a real man? I think the first thing of being a real man is you have to know your identity. So you have to realize who you are as a person and you got to know your purpose. And you have to once you figure all that out, I think everything else will come into place. Another thing is being a provider, is what I think it is being a real man. And that looks like with taking care of your family, whether your parents or your wife or your kids, and you just teach them life lessons as each day go by, as each year go by, and stuff like that. And someone who's unapologetically real with themselves and honest, you know, not put on this masquerade and trying to be something that they're not, you know. Uh, one thing that I definitely learned from my dad uh, before he passed was he always tried to make sure he was a provider. And he definitely taught me that, yo, do what you can to work with your hands to the point where you provided for people and for your family and for your loved ones, but also work with your hands to the point where you don't have to beg anybody for any handout. I circle it all back to God because, you know, being a real man is about, you're a real man, you have God in your life. And we you have God on your side, it gives a man 
more direction and more purpose. Don't never turn around, say you'll forget that. Don't expect the things change if we do the same thing with the gold chain around your neck, looking like a slave. Martin Luther King had a dream that one day we will all walk in victory. I gotta keep the faith, so I'm going to the top, even if I have to break all these things roadblock. I'm using God's word, bring a change, I'm not gonna stop. Jump on you, digital.